Hello, my name is Brendan Cahoon, and uh, I'm going to talk about software pipelining today. Uh, we were motivated to implement software pipelining uh, for Hexagon because Hexagon is a VLIW architecture, and software pipelining has been proven to be a very effective technique for improving performance on VLIW architectures. In fact, people who use our compiler uh, expect the compiler to do software pipelining, and, uh, and when we didn't do software pipelining, they would actually change the C source to, to try to get it to do it in the, in the C programs themselves. So that was a bad idea. So, so we decided to implement software pipelining, and we chose to do swing module scheduling, because that's what everybody does when they do software pipelining these days. In fact, it's been implemented in LLVM before. Uh, way back in version 1.7, there was a version of a software pipeliner for the Spark architecture that has been deleted. Uh, more recently, there was a talk at the LLVM uh, developers conference in Europe about doing software pipelining, swing module scheduling uh, at the Bitcode level. Um, the, the reason why I think people do uh, swing module scheduling is because it's, it, it works uh, and it's a relatively uh, easy uh, implementation of software pipelining to understand and to implement. The, the main part of software of swing module scheduling that, that you really need to get right in order to effectively pipeline programs is the instruction ordering of the nodes, the, the order that you're going to try to schedule instructions. You want your highest priority nodes to, to attempt to schedule those first because it, once you schedule a node, it places the constraint on every other instruction that you schedule after that. Uh, the way the algorithm works is that you'll create this list of instructions in some priority order and attempt to schedule them in that order. And if it fails for any reason, uh, the algorithm will increase your initiation interval by one and attempt to do it again. And then once you uh, successfully pipeline a loop, then you generate your prologue, your epilogue, and your new kernel. Uh, we've implemented this in LLVM as a target-independent backend pass. Uh, it's, it's a file in libcogen called machine pipeliner. Uh, that's all, most of the software pipeliner code is there. There are a few target-specific hooks that someone would need to implement if they want to use the software pipeliner, and that's mainly to inform the software pipeliner about uh, the loop structure and what to do about loop structures, especially when you're going to generate the prologue and the epilogue and the new kernel. We actually implement this uh, using scheduled DAG insters to create the dependence graph. Uh, the, the problem with that, of course, is that that creates a DAG. Um, which doesn't have cycles, and, and you really want to represent loop carry dependencies when you do software pipelining. So, so we had to change the graph a little bit, and we represent loop carry dependencies using chain edges, which is known to the software pipeliner as representing a loop carry dependence. Uh, we also do some post-processing of the DAG in order to improve the flexibility of, of the pipeliner. We implement this, or we, we put our path for uh, pipelining uh, prior to register allocation. It's still an SSA form. And we actually do it before machine, uh, the machine scheduler as well. Uh, and, and so that raises some interesting uh, problems once you create a, a pipeline loop and hope that the scheduler and the register allocator don't necessarily mess that up for you. Uh, we also use the DFA packetizer that's in LLVM in order to check for resources uh, when you're scheduling nodes and to model the parallelism. But we don't actually form packets at this step. Uh, we model the packets in the pipeliner, but the output from the machine pipeliner is a linear list of instructions. Uh, we have implemented this for Hexagon. It's, it's enabled in our compiler at O2 and above, and we, we, we actually uh, allow for some pretty large loops and about uh, the maximum amount of uh, overlapping iterations that, that we allow right now is four. These are just command line options that you can change as well. Uh, we've made several additions to the algorithm in order to uh, improve the number of uh, loops that we were able to pipeline. A couple of these extensions deal with register pressure. We really want to prioritize node sets. That's a list of instructions that uh, um, will increase your register pressure. We, we have several other heuristics that we've added in order to uh, prioritize nodes based upon different conditions that we've discovered through tuning our software pipeline. Uh, this is the performance results that, that we have. Uh, 
just some of the performance results. This is a set of image processing kernels uh, that in these kernels, we have an assembly version of these routines that someone has software pipelined in, in assembly. And we also have the C version, which has not been software pipelined. Uh, so we're comparing the performance of the C version to the assembly version. It's normalized to one, and that's the performance of the assembly version. We have two sets of bars here for each benchmark. The blue bar is the performance um, without software pipelining in the C, and the orange bar is the performance with software pipelining. With, without software pipelining, we achieve about 70% of the performance of the hand-tuned assembly code. Uh, when we turn software pipelining on, we've improved performance by about 20%, and we achieve 91% of the performance of the hand-coded assembly routine. So for Hexagon, and I think in general for VLIW architecture, software pipelining is really a necessary optimization, and it's really been proven to be effective for, for us. Thank you.